So I recently made a video where I showed how I got a 3.5 CR offer from a company in the US working completely remotely from India. And reading through the comments, I realized there are a lot of things that are completely obvious to me now, but weren't as obvious two years ago. A lot of comments were around how you can find a remote job. Do remote jobs even pay as much? What are these companies that are paying US offers in India? And in this video, I just wanted to go back two years when I resigned from Goldman Sachs India and started looking for remote opportunities. So in this video, I'll be showing you the very first remote job that I got, how I applied, what were my negotiation techniques back then, and what was the offer that I got back then. With that, let's get right into the video. So this is March 2020. This is around the time when I resigned. The primary reason was that I had a bunch of medical issues and I was asked to move back to the office, which I couldn't. And hence, I didn't really have any option other than working remotely. This was a completely new field to me. And back then, I'd say it was much nascent than it is today. COVID ended up accelerating remote work a lot because since everyone was working from home, there was no real incentive for a US company to hire someone from the US versus hiring someone from India as long as their skills were the same. Now, I had resigned in March and I was basically unemployed. And the first thing, the very obvious advice that you get if you want to start working remotely, is going to platforms like Upwork or Freelance and trying to find gigs. That was the first thing I did. Although there is a lot of chaos that happens in these platforms and you never really get a stable line of work. But again, I did not have any other option. I could not work out of the office. COVID was just starting, so companies weren't hiring. The only thing I could do was find remote work in things I was good at and get paid for it. After a month or two of random gigs at Upwork, I found this post on Twitter. Someone was looking for a software developer who knew this specific library called A-Frame. Now I remembered I used to use A-Frame back in college and I also knew not a lot of people knew A-Frame. Hence this was a niche technology that was hard to hire for and that's what got me in. I reached out to the person and as you can see the first thing I sent them was my GitHub. GitHub is a great proof of work. Not a lot of people have great GitHub profiles. So if you have a lot of contributions, it's extremely helpful when applying for remote jobs. It is what differentiates you from everyone. They were kind enough to respond. Again, when you're applying from India, the odds are stacked against you. You're most probably not going to work in the same time zone as the company in the US. You might have a small communication and language barrier as well. And generally think of it this way. If you had the choice of hiring someone from India, or someone from, let's say, Bangladesh. You'd probably go for the person in India because they're easy to reach in case you have to meet. You have more time overlap and also you'll probably get along better with that person. The same advice applies to people from the US hiring from India. The stacks are aligned against you. You really have to differentiate yourself to get that interview. Once you get the interview, things become less dependent on your location. But to get that initial step inside that door, you need a differentiation factor, which in this case for me was my GitHub contributions and the fact that I had worked in this library that not a lot of people had worked with. Now here's some counterintuitive advice that was extremely counterintuitive to me back then. The interviews were very casual. They asked me about my past A-frame projects, which I just pointed them to from my GitHub. There were no algorithmic problems really. I had an interview with the person who ended up becoming my manager and another engineer that was part of the team. That's it. But in hindsight, there were a lot of advantages for them to hire me. I'll show you a few. Now, before this, I was working at Goldman. I would make 30 to 40 lakhs a year and even lesser after taxes. This company had no engineers in India and did not really care about purchasing power parity. Still, I went with a relatively humble number in hindsight, but back then it felt like a big number to me. And as long as they would match it, I'd be pretty happy. As you can see from the message, since these are not corporate jobs and there's no real interaction with the HRs a lot of times, this was and basically asked me my salary expectations and I told them 65 to 70k US dollars which is close to 50 lakh rupees. Now focus on their reply here. They said understood that sounds realistic to us. This is a good sign. This means you've given out a number they're very comfortable with. And that's the case because most people they're hiring are from the US and purely based on purchasing power parity, this is a very humble number for them to get a good software engineer for. In fact, my number felt so low to them, I actually joined as a junior engineer. The conversation after this was fairly casual. I had a bunch of interviews and eventually was given this offer. They said, on the rate, I know you asked for 65 to 70K. I'd like to get you the 70 rate. So 70K distributed over 12 months is around 5.8K dollars a month. And they rounded it off to 6K. Now this was a huge number for me back in 2020. Considering the fact that I had to pay less taxes on this number compared to what I was paying at Goldman, and considering the fact that this was almost twice of what I was making there, the overall upside was huge. Again, these things have diminishing effect. Once you make 70K, 100K doesn't feel like a huge number. And eventually, as I made 500K, this feels like such a humble number for me to ask for. But back then, it was a huge number. I remember running into my mom's room and telling her the offer I got. Now comes the more important part. Companies hiring in India are very cautious of the talent. Since you're so far away, they cannot really track you throughout your day plus your time zones don't match so there's usually a probationary period for me that was one month so after one month they could let me go without giving me any reason or any notice period and i was extremely desperate back then this was the only job that i had so what followed was one month of me overworking and overperforming to one make sure i cross the probationary period and two grow very quickly in this company compared to traditional jobs the salary upside that you can get in remote companies 
is highly dependent on the work you do. Compare this to what I was doing at Goldman. At Goldman, if you would talk to my manager, he'd tell you I was a fairly average software developer and the salary hike I would get was usually a standard 10%, just enough to beat inflation. But here, within two months, I was pretty much running the show. At the three month mark, I asked for a raise and this offer went up to 100K. And two months after that, I was leading back in at this company. I spent almost a year working at this company and it was probably the most interesting job I've ever done. And it started off with a single message on Twitter. A year into the job, I realized there's such a big arbitrage between Indian developers and US-based companies that a 100k offer for a mildly experienced or even a fresher is a win-win situation for everybody. In fact, around 9 months into the company, I referred a very close friend of mine who got almost a 10x increase in their salary. And this person was not from an IIT, they were from a local college, they did not even do computer science, they were an EC graduate. And it made me realize luck also pays a huge part in getting you a remote job. So that's it. That's my journey of cracking my first remote job after I resigned from Goldman. So the key takeaways are, one, if you want a remote job, keep grinding. Eventually one opportunity will strike and that's all you need. Once you have your step inside the door, there's no looking back. You can always go from one company to the other. The most difficult part is getting into that first company. Keep an active GitHub, make all your contributions open source. And it really, really doesn't matter what college you're from, what branch or field you did your bachelor's in, as long as you can prove you're really good at software development. I still feel there's a lot to do to close this arbitrage and close this gap that exists. And for the same reason, I have a newsletter linked in the description where I'll be posting remote jobs as they come by. So feel free to subscribe to it. And if you want to know what was my progression after this, what happened after I left this company, let me know in the comments and that will be the next video. That brings us to the end of this video. I'll see you in the next one.